to correct some of the problems. This first tells us where we are. And I say, I'm going to do that. But first, let me tell you up front that whatever you've seen on TV every day, don't pay any attention to it as far as what blacks are. You'll watch it, okay? They have a special class of a black overclass in America whose primary sole responsibility is to anesthetize you, to zombify you, to hypnotize you, and give you the fraudulent belief that somehow black folk are moving forward and advancing in America. You're not. In proportion to comparative terms, you're going backwards. And here's what, here's what capitalism is. Then capitalism is, that, is this. Owning and controlling the land, the resources, and, use, and tools, and using other people's labor to enrich yourself. That is capitalism. Let me tell you to you again. Capitalism is owning the land, the tools, and the resources, and using other people's labor to enrich yourselves. Now, in neither one of those definitions of, of did I say in the most capitalist nation on earth, did I say anything about social integration and civil rights? Then why do you keep practicing something that doesn't exist, that doesn't pertain to you? If you live in a capitalist nation, a society, you should be practicing what? Capitalism. Owning and controlling the resources, the tools, and, and, uh, and land. And that's why I told you initially about the Monopoly game. The Monopoly game was set up in, way back in 1860. Here's what it is. Owning and controlling the land. How many people here have ever played Monopoly? Okay, good. Now, Monopoly is supposed to be based on this premise. Everybody's supposed to sit down and get the same amount of money to play the game. You're supposed to take that money, and what are you supposed to do? Buy land. Buy land. And now, and then, plus, when you buy the land, they want you to do something that's in my power numbers principles and all my books. They want you to aggregate the land. If you buy just one piece of land in a set, it has no value. You got to get all three pieces. That's called aggregation. So you got land. The second thing in the, in the Monopoly game is you got to buy the businesses. The water country, the electric country, electric truck company. What's the other one? Railroads. Okay. You got to buy half businesses. Here we are. We don't own the land because they never gave us any land. Wouldn't give us any land. We plan a real life Monopoly game. We don't own any land. We don't own the electric company, the railroads. We don't own any, don't own any businesses. Okay. And then the second thing, third thing, you're supposed to be able to put, improve the property by putting houses on it, stuff like that, a lot of houses, but in combination. So you can generate three or four and get a lot of money. But black folk at one time by 1920 had over 20 million acres of land. They let it dissipate and got away from it. They don't own it down there about 300,000 acres. They lost 19 million acres of land between 1920 and 1950. So they don't own any land. They don't own that land also so put hotels. Where are the hotels? We finally got one black hotel in New York now. I mean, I mean in Washington, D.C. We don't own any hotels, so we, can't, we play a Monopoly game with no hotels either. Now, how can we play a game on this game, on this rule of owning and controlling land, resources, and tools, and generate wealth? We're playing a real-life Monopoly game by throwing the dice and hoping that the dice will land on the right property. On what, what's the right property? Income tax reform, free parking. <laughs> Going around the board, just rolling the dice. With no money, no land, no buildings, nothing. And sooner or later, we're going to throw the, throw the, the dice and the land to give us, throw us on the wrong property. And what happens? We go, we, go, we go past go, don't collect $200 and take your butt straight to jail. That's why you got all these blacks sitting up in jail. You're playing a game that your deck is stacked against you because you're not playing to play the rules. Because again, you, what you're doing is that you're eradicating your own history of your treatment, how you've been mistreated when you say, I'm just like a, I'm just like a Mexican, I'm just like a Hispanic, we're all together. And right now what they want to do is they put those groups in protected class, and Obama just proposed putting transsexuals into a protected class. Even though we couldn't, even though with they, even back in 1860, they took black folk out of the Freedmen Bureau. Now they're protecting all these groups all these immigrant groups coming to get all these protections and nobody wants to protect black folk because we've been trained to go around and want to save the world save the world stretch your exceptionality and say we ain't put, don't put us in any of these broad categories put us everything coming to black folk we want you to put it out in front of us where we can see it if it's for us let us see it point one and secondly do not give us any more symbolism no more symbolism for black folk yeah, okay
They're always trying to give black folks symbolism. Well, look what we've done for y'all. We gave y'all Martin Luther King's birthday. Who cares? That didn't put no biscuits on a black folks' table. I want you all to only take what, and want and demand that which you can count and measure. See, if you can't count and measure, we don't want it. Don't be telling us, well, we're going well, to give you all a special holiday. No, I don't want no special holiday. Give me some money, okay? And, and so, 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 get, so that's, the, that's the first thing. Go to your blackness. Claim your exceptionality. Don't let anybody equate you to anybody else. When all these people run across the board and say, we are equal to you. No, you're not equal to me. The next thing I want you to do is that now we can go back and build our communities because we're going to play a real-life monopoly game. And you've got to have the land. I want you all to start building black business communities. Build a black business community someplace. Because otherwise you cannot get wealth unless you have a community. Right now we do not have not one single solitary black community in the entire United States. It is impossible for you all to play and win in this, in this society because the deck is stacked against you. They want you to play as individuals and unknown persons where you don't know each other. You go back and say, no, we want to build, we're going to build black business communities. Now, why don't you have any communities? Because, see, everybody else has communities. And uh, we, tried to build, we tried to build a black town in Detroit, Michigan. They said, that's divisive. This is advice for you all to build something for black folk. I proposed, had a plan laid out to build a black business district in the city of Detroit. And whites and all the other groups marched downtown. Here's the Mexicans in Detroit, Hispanics in Detroit, Asians, Arabs, all of Dearborn is all Arabs. They all marched downtown to protest my building a black business district for black folk. They said, Dr. As we admit in Detroit, Detroit is 92% black. We got a black, we got a Chinatown, Asian town, Arab town, Greek town, Pole town, Hockey town, Cork town. But if you build something for black folk, that's racist. And, and, and guess what your leadership said? You sure is right. That would be wrong. <laughs> sure, we don't, we don't want to do that. We come a long ways. We came all the way from social, inter- we've been, we're socially integrated now. We don't need anything. And it, I said, but you don't have anything. I, yeah, I know, but the little bit we got, we, 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 we. <laughs> if we try to build something for black folk, they'll take that away from us. And that, and, and that took me back to 1935 when a guy named George Gershwin wrote a play, an opera called Porgy and Bess. And right in the middle of the Porgy and Bess, they got Porgy's out in the middle of the black na- neighborhood singing, We got plenty of nothing, and nothing is plenty for us. I said, nobody's that silly. And just thinking, Detroit, Michigan, when I was outside of that business district, Black folk had, a, had an annual disposable income in Detroit of about 11, about $11 billion between the city and the schools and everything else. Disposable income. And they, you see, it went into bankruptcy. I told them then, if you, if you start practicing group economics with your $11 million and make your money not even necessarily bounce 8 to 12, bounce 10 times, now you got $100 billion. Because the money would come around past you 10 times. If the money circulates around, your 11 billion would become what? 10 times becomes 100 billion. You know what they, what they told them? Well, Dr. Evans, that'll be racist for us to do that. And so now Detroit went bankrupt, and now whites have taken over Detroit. They're going to take over every black city in the United States. They're going to they're gentrify them with immigrants. They're going to bury, bury, bury you beneath immigrants coming in, and they're going to come in and come over you and bury you then they're going to privatize all the public resources. Yes. I told them in Detroit, I said, Detroit, if you let all these immigrants come in, they're going to take everything of value out. They're going to privatize the bridge to Canada, the tunnel to Canada, the city airport, the zoo, Cobo Hall, Joe Louis Arena, the historical museum, um, the golf course. I can go on that. And now they got all that. And now you got 92% blacks sitting there not only on anything personally, they don't even own anything publicly anymore. They'll lose it. They're gonna, in Washington, D.C., when I went to Washington, D.C. with President Carter, I ran Jimmy Carter's campaign in Florida, for instance. I got to Washington, D.C. as an example, and we had a 78% black city. They used to call it Chocolate City. Now it's down to like about 41 to 42%. You're going to get wasted. You are this nation's official underclass now. And underclass means those individuals 
by the pure nature of their social economic conditions, you're predestined to live as beggars and criminals for the rest of your existence if you don't break out now. You can hang it up. You quit, you don't, don't, worry, don't worry about your kids anymore. They're through. If you don't get yourself together right now and quit playing these silly games thinking that somehow you, because you're socially integrated, you can achieve something, you're through. 